What's up guys, it's Weaver. welcome back to my channel! Many people are concerned about the frame rate performance using the Pimax headsets, and sure, running a very high resolution and wide field of view is quite heavy on your GPU and sometimes also on the CPU, but there are some tweaks and sometimes some bugs that can help out. Yes, there are some things you could do to improve the performance dramatically. Some of the methods work with all VR games and some others work with the majority of Steam VR titles at least. In this part 1 of my new series, I will show you a way to improve your performance up to maybe 30 or 40% in many Steam VR games. In my upcoming part 2 video, I will show you something that will improve your performance more than 100% by hardly even reducing the image quality. And if you are a Pimax user, I'm sure you might find it interesting. Thing. But before we begin, a huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters and a special thanks to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commando Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador. So this part 1 of this series is based on my latest video regarding how I managed to get from below 60 frames per second to almost stable 80 frames per second in DCS world. And yes, I realize that this actually works quite well in many Steam VR games as well. If you haven't seen that video yet, no worries, I will briefly explain my unique findings. In my benchmark videos in the past, no matter what I did while benchmarking the RTX 2080 Ti in VR games or simulators, I couldn't get a proper or maximum GPU utilization. It was most of the time stuck at 60, 70 or maybe low 80%, and in the best case scenarios I was close to 90% but never above, and this of course gave lower performance and lower frame rates. And no, the GPU heating is not the issue, and I will give you some proof for that in a moment. I'm using Using NZXT Kraken water cooling for my CPU, totally 8 fans in the PC case, plus very high speeds on my all 3 RTX graphic card fans, so the graphic card temperatures are rarely even 60 degrees, many times around 50. Anyway, what I found out is possible by using any kind of overclocking software such as MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision X1, and no, we're not talking about overclocking here. Download and install the software first, and before you do anything else, disable the VSync in the global 3D options of the Nvidia control panel. Now after starting up a VR game or a simulator, while being in the game, Alt tab back to your MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision X1 software and click on the default or reset to default button one or a few times and your GPU utilization will instantly jump up to proper values above 90%, sometimes as high as 97 or 98%. This is resulting in a much better performance and higher frame rates overall. This doesn't affect all games or simulators, but many of them. This may also give you a full frame rate of 80 or 90 frames per second depending on which headset you're using, but sometimes it will just increase the total frame rate with 10, 15 or even more than 20 frames per second extra. And if you don't believe me, I will give you a few examples and recommendations here. Let's start with Hellblade VR, running in high resolution on the Pimax 5K Plus headset with high settings in-game and super sampling at 110% in the game, the game struggles around 65 to 75 frames per second and the GPU utilization is only around 80%. Clicking the default button instantly puts the GPU at above 90% and the frame rate is suddenly around 90 frames per second on the Pimax 5K Plus. In other words, you get almost a full frame rate here. Next up, Digital Combat Simulator 2.5, which is a VR simulator I showed you in my last video, but I'm gonna repeat myself very quickly here. By clicking on the default button while in the flight, gives me more than 20 frames per second extra and the GPU utilization is finally almost at max, at least above 90% compared to the 70 or 75% before. This test was made on a Pimax 8K with max refresh rate of 80Hz or 80 frames per second of course. Also note that no matter if you start DCS world in Steam VR mode or with the native VR mode without the Steam VR, either using a Pimax or an Oculus Rift, this is what actually happens. Yes, I actually got some confirmations from Oculus Rift users that tells me that the default button, bug or whatever it's called actually gives them a better performance and higher GPU utilization in DCS world 2.5. 
Now Project Cars 2 as I used to try, on medium to high settings with high resolution of course and in-game super sampling at 1.4 I get around 50 to 55 frames per second. With just one click of the default button we are up in 95% GPU utilization and the frame rate is suddenly up in 65 to 70 frames per second instead. This could unfortunately cause some flickers, especially if you are not reaching the full frame rate of your headset, so I would recommend you to just enable smart smoothing after applying this tweak and you will get a very smooth and stable Project Cars 2 drive without frame drops below 45 frames per second which smart smoothing needs. Thanks to the motion reprojection with smart smoothing this game is even more playable now and more smooth. And if you still haven't seen my video about Pimax smart smoothing make sure to check it out. In the game The Forest VR, we have a between 40 to 45 frames per second and the GPU utilization is around 80%. This is a very demanding game and I used some higher setting this time. Clicking on default button once did nothing actually, clicking two times did nothing, even three times, but the fourth time I clicked, the frame rate suddenly jumped up to 57 or 58 frames per second. Now also look what happens when I load an overclock profile in Afterburner, it gives me another boost and now it's running in around 60 frames per second. The GPU utilization is at 97% now. And check the temperature, it's still okay. So this has nothing to do with the overclocking or heat issue. Once again, this could result in some flicker, so better run this tweak with smart smoothing enabled and you will have a super smooth image since you never drop below 45 frames per second, at least on an RTX 2080 Ti. To prove you that it's not about overclocking or temperatures, let's try the game Moss. I'm starting off by having fans on very low, the temperature is already rising above 70 degrees. I have around 83% of GPU usage and 60 to 65 frames per second in average. Now let's see what happens when I click the default button again in MSI Afterburner. Suddenly we have a 96% GPU usage, the frame rate is above 75 frames per second and the GPU is running at 70 degrees Celsius. In this case when the game is running between 75 and 80 frames per second, I would recommend you to use the 72Hz mode by changing it in the Python software. This will give you a smooth image in 72 frames per second without any flicker and without using smart smoothing. Of course you could also use the smart smoothing which will make it very stable and smooth as the frame it will never drop below 45 frames per second. So let's try Elite Dangerous now. I get slightly below 60 frames per second and the GPU utilization is 88% which is quite ok actually. Note that G-Sync and V-Sync are disabled in my Nvidia control panel and in the game, so it's not limiting the GPU or the game to 60 frames per second. Now pushing the default button brings the utilization to 95% and the frame rate is suddenly above 70 frames per second. Again try using 72Hz mode here instead, if that doesn't work apply the smart smooth instead and you can run Elite Dangerous fully smooth because you never will go below the locked 45 frames per second anyway. Lastly, let's see what we get in Fallout 4 VR. In Commonwealth I get around 60 frames per second and the GPU usage is around 80%. And don't get fooled about the 60 frames per second, there is no V-Sync on. If I just look down, the frame rate goes up of course as there is less object to render in the view. Now clicking default once did nothing. I click default again and the magic just happens once again. The GPU utilization jumps up to 95% and the frame rate gets a boost to around 70 frames per second, in other words 10 extra frames per second which is not bad but it's still not enough of course. Now let's apply some extra overclocking by now loading one of my saved profiles and this gives us a few extra frames only unfortunately but it also makes it around 72 frames per second and unfortunately the image still could get some flicker. But don't worry you could actually run Fallout 4 VR in the 72Hz mode and again by changing it in the PyTool or just apply the smart smoothing and you'll get a smooth image reprojected in 45 frames per second to 90 frames per second on a Pimax 5K Plus or 40 frames per second to 80 frames per second on a Pimax 8K of course, as I showed you in the video about smart smoothing.
So this was just a couple of examples I made for you. Feel free to try many more games with this bug or tweak or whatever we may call it. My next video, part two of this series, will be more interesting for many of you as it will actually give you much higher performance increase again. So stay tuned for that. Guys, let me know what you think about this and also give me some heads up in the comments here below with your results trying this tweak in SteamVR games on your Pimax, of course. Thanks a lot for watching and and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for part 2 of this series which will be even better. Lastly, a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters and a special thanks to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador. If you would like to help me out, please join my Patreon, I would highly appreciate it. Cheers guys!